We're live. Hi, and welcome to Gay Out the City. I'm your host, Prince Electro Diamond, and today I'm here with go-go dancer Tr Triton Taino. Taino, Taino, thank you. Yeah, I can't fucking learn how to talk. Um, how are you today, Zaxi? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. It's almost the weekend. Thank God. As we were talking about before, I'm hoping to be out of Florida by the beginning of next month. Because one of the things is it's getting too fucking hot here. Like, literally, when I went to go check the like my like weather app on my phone and like I saw it was 91, and then I looked in Detroit and it was 78. I'm like, I'm like, this ain't right. <laughs> Yeah, this one time I was sitting on stand uh, outside, and I'm like, I could fry an egg on my thighs. It's so hot. Yeah. Well, Orlando, forget it. Like, I used to, I lived in Orlando at one point, and like, I'm in South Florida now, and like, Orlando's always like five to like 10 degrees, either hotter or colder. Yeah. Than where I am in South Florida. And, or, yeah, and it's like, I know Orlando was the worst. <laughs> I felt that. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was great, like, when I was there, because, like, I moved away right before the, like, right before the pandemic happened. So, like, I was there when I was, like, I was still there when Parliament House was open and all that. So, it's, like, once that stuff kind of, like, closed down, I'm, like, yeah, not really driven the move back there. Mm. And, yeah. So anyway, so where are you originally from? I'm from Puerto Rico. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I am, I say, born and raised in South Florida. I live about an hour north of West Palm Beach. So I'm like... Not really in the fun part. The fun part I guess consider like Fort Lauderdale, Miami. That's like an hour and a half, two hours away. So pretty much just stay home, saving up money. <laughs> I'm trying to do that. It's it's I will say this. I was fortunate enough that like so I've been as I said, I've been back here since like right right before the pandemic. So like I was lucky enough that, like, my dad wasn't charging me rent, but I had to prove to him that I was, like, actually saving money to leave. So, like, when I told him, I just had this conversation with him on Saturday. I'm like, look, I have the money to go now to Detroit. I might just need you to help me co-sign a lease. I'm like, I just need your name on a lease. I don't, I don't need anything from you. I got all my money saved up. I just need to get out because florida like i well i always convince people who are trying to move to florida i'm like don't move here like like li like literally just don't move here like people say but i want to go to fort lauderdale i'm like no you want to party in fort lauderdale that's different than living in fort lauderdale <laughs> just like you want to party in miami anyway so, what was it like for you growing up as a kid in Puerto Rico? Well, um, I feel like I had this thing going on where I camouflaged with, like, straight people. I wouldn't say that I was passing. I was just not noticed. Right. Yeah. Because I was dressing pretty basic for my standards. So people didn't really look at me twice like that. Yeah, I mean... We all, well, I mean, I wouldn't know what it's like, but I feel like a lot of us did because we had to. Because yeah. you have to do what you have to do to survive. And, like, so I don't know what age exactly you are, but I know, like, when I was a kid, gays were not accepted. Like, you had maybe Will and Grace, like, on, and you had, like, on Showtime, you have like queer as folk, but you didn't really have people accepting gay people. It was very much a time where like 
gay people were hated. So, like, even if you knew something, you kind of pretended like you didn't know something. To get along. And I was also raised in a very religious household. Like, I was born and raised Roman Catholic, so, like, that... Not necessarily, like, the most inviting, like, very conservative sort of um, just very conservative, because well, again, Florida. Um, yeah. So then, so what was it like for you when you finally came out? Um, it was very liberating. At first, my parents weren't, like, really used to me being very expressive. Because, again, I was very reserved as a teenager. Right. I mean... Well, I always tell people, I was very fortunate. Well, I wouldn't say I was very fortunate. I had it a little bit easier because I only had to come out to one parent because I came out um, four months after my mom died. So I was only having to come out to my dad. And then I have an older sister who my older sister literally just came out last year. So I was like, <laughs> I always say like I was the brother who was very accepting but in the other in the other vein I've kind of went like you're welcome bitch like I kind of paved the path for you like but it was good and well it was good in one part bad in another part so when I came out I remember telling this telling the, the youth minister of my church about this performance idea I had with a knife and how I practice stabbing myself because I'm dramatic, obviously. And he left the room. He came back in about 10 minutes later and he said, okay, you have one or two options. Either you're coming with me or I'm calling the cops. Now, <laughs> hindsight's 2020, because I would have let him call the cops because <laughs> the cops wouldn't have done anything to me. And instead, we went to go get he took me to go to get a psyche valve at a hospital, which they had told me I had passed. And then I remember like being on the phone with my dad, basically talking to him, telling him, be like, yeah, just come back here and get me. Like, I'm good. Um, I'm ready. And then I had a cop yell at me. He's like, get off the phone. I'm thinking, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm just over here, like minding my own business. And then they put me in a hospital room. And then from there it was about five hours to when they actually told me anything it was pretty much the next day then they told me they had put me in a behavioral clinic where i spent 64 hours basically having every freedom taken away from me and trying to convince these people trying to convince multiple psychiatrists that I wasn't actually suicidal. The first one didn't believe me. The second one did. And then he let me go. I met with a week later with the youth minister and a priest and they trapped me in a room with, and then set me up with a therapist who tried to pray the gay away. So it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm grateful. Well, I'm not grateful that it happened. I needed it to happen to make me a stronger person. That's what I wholeheartedly believe. Anyone who thinks struggles are bad, struggles make you stronger. Yep. And different people have different struggles. Yeah. And right. Different people have different struggles. And when you don't
I always say people who haven't like had hardships in their well have hardships in their own view in their lives, I'm like then either you aren't living or you're lying. That's it's gotta be one of those two things because everybody I mean at certain ages you can say like okay you haven't had you aren't old enough to have a hardship yet. Like but once you get into the mid twenties, upper twenties, even closer to thirty, if you haven't had any hardships, you've had it way too easy. In in my view. I know others may disagree with that, but I'm like No. I also don't trust anybody who hasn't had any hardships by 30, because it's like... It's suspicious. It's suspicious, and it's also me where I'm like, okay, so were you rich? Because... <laughs> Are you Because that's, that, <laughs> that's the thing, when it's like... People... Yeah, rich or white. People view... I know a lot of people view poverty as a bad thing, Or like lower class, somewhat lower class living. It's like, I grew up in a middle class family. I left that life. I left that. I left that life. I um basically quit college and kind of started chasing my dream. So like, I'm a musician, which is what another reason why I want to move to Detroit because I'm planning on putting out an album this year. So it's like, nice. Thank you. So in that, it's like when I moved to Orlando, it's like I had to learn how to find myself as an artist. And I did. I lived in like this is why you can't live in Orlando like this anymore. Living in apartments between like 625 and like 750 for like rent. Living on your own. I miss those days. Luckily, in Detroit, you can still actually do that. Because <laughs> I am not, I'm not, not that I'm opposed. People are like, love roommates. I don't love roommates. Because my thing is, I'm like, at the end of the day, unless I'm like, intimately involved with somebody, I'm like, why are you here? <laughs> like, like, honestly, like, why are you here? You just... You sitting here cramping my style, motherfucker. Like, why are you here? You annoy me. I understand. I tend yeah. to pull my weights. And some yeah. people just don't. And then it's like, what have you with that? But it's like, if somebody misses the rent, then you could be out on the street. It's like, if I want to be, if I'm going to be out on the street, I want to be because, be because I fucked up, not somebody else fuck, fucked up. Anyway, so okay, so what made you finally move to or or what made you move to Orlando? Well, I didn't have much of a choice. I was thirteen, and my parents wanted better opportunities out of Puerto Rico. Right. So I mean, okay, I guess with that, then, do you want to stay in Orlando forever, or like? is your eventual plan to get out of Florida? I like Florida personally because I am very prone to cold. I don't like being in the cold. Like, snow is pretty. I saw it, like, maybe three times. It's pretty when it's falling down, but then it becomes slushy in the ground, and I'm very... I'll freeze. Right. I mean... And because, like, Florida is, like, the closest to the natural climate of Puerto Rico, that's why I like it most. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you like warmer climates, my thing is I've been in the snow. I've never lived in the snow. I'll probably, 
I might say something completely different a year from now. <laughs> but to me, that seems intriguing. I've always liked it when it's gotten colder in Florida. I'm probably one of the very few people who does. Because, like, I went through just to kind of, like, prepare my body. I pretty much went through winter. Actually, I went through the entire winter without, like, wearing any sort of, like, sweatshirt or anything. And, like, my body was able to handle it. So, it's like, it's like, I'm ready to try it. Come at me. Which I could relate. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're from Puerto Rico and, like, you've adapted to Florida, I mean, arguably, well, no, that wouldn't be the same climate. I would say, like, Georgia would be similar, but it wouldn't be exactly the same because you don't have, like, Georgia gets somewhat cold. Yeah, Florida gets cold. Puerto Rico is summer all the time, basically. That's probably nice one part of the year, but it's probably, like, awful another part of the year, because it's, like, I feel like when you get in summer, because, like, summer's probably really hot, right? Yeah, but I was always close to the beach or the rivers, so I yeah. can always go there. <laughs> I think it's because, like, Yeah. I mean, I'm not opposed to, like, the heat entirely. Like, I might come and visit Florida once I move, but, like, there's also a lot of depression for me. They always, they always, you hear people say, like, oh, when you're in the sunshine, you're always happy. It's very, or you're very, like, can get through depression. I'm like, I've never been depressed my whole life. Like, so clearly that... <laughs> That theory might work for some people. It doesn't work for me. But I, I do say that my uh, emotions are heavily reliant on the weather. Right. I mean... Yeah. If I'm cold, I'm just mad. Or, like, sad. If I'm warm, I feel good. That's gotta be... That's got to, well, again, that probably sucks half the year, but, like, in some ways, it's got to be good. Yeah, I'll, and, like, burrito into my, like, bed sheets. Yeah. See, and that's, because there are different types of, like, people who are depressed, too, and I was always what I call a high-functioning person with depression, meaning, like, when I was in, like, when I was younger, I could. And, like, in my t early 20s, I could. But, like, now, if I'm tired, I don't want to get out of bed. Like. I understand. Yeah. Especially on the weekends, if I can avoid it, I definitely avoid it. Okay. So, what made you want to become a go-go dancer? A nice side hustle that was easy to get. I mean, fair. <laughs> I have my main it... job in the day, and then I work at night. I mean... I mean, yeah. I guess I always, I always admire people who, like... Well, first of all, I don't know anybody who just does go-go dancing. And if you do, if your whole life is go-go dancing and stripping. They must be very popular. You must, you must be very popular. And it's also, you must be in the right area. Because, as I've always said, when, at least in my view, I don't get why dancers aren't paid to be there. Like. 
the fact that everyone has to work for tips, I think, is insane. When if you paid people like the base minimum wage in the United States, which is I think like five forty three, might be a little bit more than that. It's like if you pay them like the base minimum wage for an hour and like just have them working on tips, you could do that. Also, although people have also argued with me that bars can't afford to do it, and my response to that is, if bars can't afford to do that, then why are they open? Or why are you having entertainment if you can't afford to pay them? I mean, I don't know. Controversial, but it's just something I believe in. So, what was it like for you the first time you performed? I used to hide, like, all my defining features, like my tattoos, my hair, because I didn't want to be recognized, because I was afraid. But now I'll let my hair down and maybe occasionally I'll show off my tattoos. Ooh, so that leads me to this question. How do you, since you're basically wearing like nothing, how do you hide your tattoos? <laughs> I'll wear some bracelets. My tattoos are on my wrists. Oh, okay. So you don't have any like on like your back or anything like that? No, okay. I mean, so, okay, with, with me and performing, I'll say this, like, I have the, like, rare thing of a drag queen, because most drag queens get started in gay bars, and I got started actually performing at open mic nights and straight bars, so, like, I know that, um, thing of, as I tell people, that thing of you work a room and, like, you have to learn how to work a room and get people on your side. It's it's something I kind of love because it's challenging, and if I feel if you perform for audiences that just love you, then you never have to fight as a performer and you never have that like fighter mentality, which I feel allows you to deal with haters. It's I mean, it's not always easy dealing with haters. I tell people that it's not always easy, but when you you have to like um fight you do become stronger and you learn how to basically tell people to f off and i love being able to do that respectable quality yeah i mean cuz It's something that I say makes people last longer in the um, entertainment sphere. And also, you, what you know of this is being a dancer. When you know when you know how to like stand up for yourself, it allows less people to take advantage of you. Because I've always pointed this out with every go go dancer and stripper I've been on here. Putting your hands and your fingers where they're not supposed to go ain't cute. It's. I will say this if they wanted it there, they would be doing what the guys who are looking to like go home with you and make extra money would be doing. They'd be like, bending their ass over further for you like go ahead and grab and all that but it's like I don't know why in 2024 we have to tell people to treat people with fucking respect and just realize that like 
yes, they're shaking their ass for you. They're making a fantasy. They're doing all this. They're asking to somewhat be objectified. But that doesn't mean even with a even with objectification, you have boundaries. I mean, you should. Yeah, I have boundaries. Well, I mean, right, and I feel with that, it's what I tell people is, it's the age you get started in. Like, I feel the younger you are, the less you know how to defend those boundaries. And the older you get, like, I like I will say, in my early 20s, I remember performing at one point, and I had, when I was just, like, sitting, waiting in between songs, I had some motherfucker snatch my wig off my head. And I remained very calm in the situation. But now, if anyone dare try to do that, I hate saying that I would cause a scene. I would, I would cause a scene. But, I mean, sometimes you have to make an example out of people to, like, get them to be like, oh, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, have you ever had a tip stolen from your body? Can't say I have. And I've dropped some money, but about five dollars, maybe, in total. And they'll just pick it up seductively, of course. See, that's gotta be. I don't know. Maybe y'all in Orlando got it easier because I've heard plenty of stories about people trying to steal tips and all that. And I'm like, I'm like, you just expect somebody to stand there and like let you like take some. It's like it's theirs. You know, they're working for it. Um, being go go dancers at the place that I work. Um, yeah. There's go go dancers next to each other. We're always right. next to each other. Um, first starting off, I thought that they were going to be me. I thought it was going to be a competitive caddy environment. I'm like, no, they're actually friendly. If I see my fellow go go dancers like drop it money, I like put it back on them seductively, of course. <laughs> yeah. And if they see me dropping money, they will put it back on me seductively. <laughs> well, I mean. Right. And at least the um well cuz I mean obviously I know oh. You're good. I mean like granted uh, one second. I Oh, crap. There we go. I okay. was getting a call. I hung up. Yeah. Not you good, baby. It's like well I know some of the people you work with. Like, I'm friends with some of the people you work with. Like, I'm friends with Justify. Like, I love him. I know. Yeah. I love Justify. Like, I've had Justify on here. I've had Cloud on here. Like, I haven't met anyone. Like, granted, I haven't been to Stiffy's. I'm probably going to go, like, before I move. Actually, I told Justify. I'm like, I am going to go up there to see you because. As I always tell people, I love to plan for things. I get busy. <laughs> I understand that. Especially the thing is with Orlando, I if I had to, I theoretically could do it in a day, but that's two and a half hours. So like I mean you can do it if I had had to but it like it makes more sense to like drive up there like spend the night and then come home yeah definitely yeah i do the same thing in fort lauderdale it's like i'm like spend a couple nights and 
just relax, enjoy it, because that that's what you do when you're poor. You take vacations not that far away from where you are. You don't like fly off. I see all these people like going to Puerto Rico shit or like going to um England and all this stuff. I'm like, so what's it like to have money? <laughs> like Like, what's it like to just go to a foreign country? <laughs> anyway. So, where am I? Okay. So, have you ever hooked up with someone who's tipped you? Yes. <laughs> 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 I know what that long pause meant. I mean, first of all, if you're very, actually, I say, if you haven't like at least thought about doing it or done it once, you ain't taking advantage of being in the nightlife. Like, <laughs> like you really, I mean, As I always point out to people, it's cute like when you first start out. Like you take advantage of this stuff. I feel like eventually at some point you get in the game long enough to where you might still do it, but you don't do it as often because it's a lore wears off. Yeah. And even in that It can also send mixed messages to people that if you're paid a certain amount of money, you can do whatever you want with them. Again, as I say, very accepting of that, very accepting of sex work. My feeling is I don't actively do it, but my view is if you're going to pay me money, I'm going to take it. Like, you give me a donation. Yeah. You give into the needy, and I need a new Gucci belt. <laughs> yes. And I love people who are like, I would never do that. It's like, okay. It's like, again, it's like, okay, Mr. Moneybags, you're sitting over there talking about how you can just like walk away from it. Now, I say the moment you feel like you're crossing your own standards, the money ain't worth it then. But it's like, once you get, as long as you're in that like bounds of like what your like line is and where you're getting the money, get what you can. Get what you can and get it. I would say get it when you're young because. Not to be egotistical, but some of y'all ain't gonna age like I do. <laughs> like, because the thing I point out with me, I'm turning, I'm turning thirty this month. So like, with me turning thirty, and somebody's telling me, "Oh, I thought you were twenty four. I'm like, "That's that That's is how you do it." Yeah, it's like. And it's like, I tell people my secrets, like, get sleep, drink water, and moisturize your damn skin. It's literally not that hard. I tried to, tell, I tried to tell my best friend that he's 30 now, and he told me at one point he was at a party, and people were, like, going around guessing people's ages. And somebody guessed he was 38. I'm like, I told you, bitch, you didn't listen to me. Like, like I gave y'all, I gave you the secret. It's like that's why I remember that. I I tried to be a supportive friend, but I did have to put down the phone because I was laughing too hard. But like anyway. Yeah. So, so what's your dating life been like? 
I have a boyfriend. Oh. I met him at 2020 during the pandemic, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, we used to work at Publix together, actually. Oh, cute. Yeah. I used to work in the bakery. He used to work at customer service. So every time he used to walk by the bakery, he saw everything delicious. The desserts were good, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, okay. He used to check out the cake and the buns. Exactly. Dessert was good, too. <laughs> so, I mean, okay. So, I guess I'm going to ask in that. I'll answer this question in a minute. But it's like, when you were thinking about going into the go-go field, how was his reaction with that? No, he's fine with it. I'm just working. See, that is that is the kind of boyfriend entertainers need. An understanding and supportive boyfriend. Of course, I had a guy like at one point say he was interested, and then he saw he's like, it's like, oh my god, I saw you flirting with this other guy. I mean, like, I'm like, you saw me doing my job, like. And you have a problem with that? It's like, because it's like, if you could not handle me flirting with other guys, me um, kissing backup dancers, all of this when I'm performing, it's like, if you can't handle this, baby, I'm the wrong person for you. Because Period. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna change for a man. Like, why would I've never done that? Now the fact that your man is not in entertainment at all, I feel like in some ways might help you because there's no like egos. Cause that happened with a guy who was trying to date me. Recently, we've been like friends with benefits for years, and he said he wanted to try it. And I'm like, I'm like open minded. I'm like, okay, fine, you do you. It's like we can do this together. It's like, it's like, but you have to understand that, like, especially he wanted to be a go go dancer, and like, he also go go dancer, stripper, and like rapper. I'm like, you have to understand, I'm making all my own opportunities. Meaning, I'm not like you waiting for somebody to give me an opportunity. Mm. I, I have to hit guests up myself. I have to constantly like do this. I have to plan with people. I have to um, hit people up all the time. So it's like, I'm on a hamster wheel like spinning. And you have to keep up. Or you have to realize that is not for you. And I think he started to realize that it wasn't for him. And I'm not mad about that either because you want to try something and then like you realize, oh, it's not for me. And because my thing is I know how to not be jealous. I could sit there and like, because at least my view is if you're in a relationship with somebody, and they succeed, you should be proud for them, not jealous of them. Yes. And in that, a lot of people don't know how to do that. And it's like, it's like, why? It's like, first of all, it's like, if your partner's out here succeeding and you want to come into this industry, they have contacts for you. Once you come into this industry, that's who you're going to want to be with because that's how you have to be. Now, in that, you have to also be likable. That's probably like, I don't, okay, I don't know. 
as a go go, I don't feel that like you have to because you're not really like speaking. You're more just there. I feel like it's better if you're likable overall because <laughs> when you meet the right person, they can get you somewhere else to go. I mean, granted, you you only work at Stiffy's, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as I've heard on here before, the Orlando scene is dying. There's not many places for people to perform. Mm-hmm. I feel that. Yeah. I mean... Well, first of all, the one thing that I tell people and they're like majorly shocked about it when they're when I tell people it's like, oh yeah, Orlando bars close at two, and people are like, What? I'm like, Yeah. Like the bar ain't open past two. It's like, yes, you have a lot of tourists there, but I don't know why that is either. But it's yeah. like in Puerto Rico, the bars close at seven in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally that's um. Where else is like that? It's kind of like that in Miami too. Places don't like close till five a.m. Now, granted, when I was performing, I was always done wet well before two two a.m. So I was at home asleep, but. <laughs> That's because I had, like, the crazy thing. I used to do two shows a night at one point. So I was literally in two different venues. So I would go do my, like, open mic set for, like, 15 minutes, get out of there, go to um, Parliament House to finish the night. So I used to leave my house every, every Thursday at, like, 7 30 in at night and not get home till 12 30 in the morning which a lot of entertainers say like that's early i'm like do you realize how long of a night that is when you're out in drag it's like that's god i'm gonna have to do math i'm not even gonna do the math that's a long ass time like it did and... do yeah and and then like on that i used to have to like get up at 4 a.m the next day to be to work at 6 Mm. where i'd work till 8 p.m the following night so it's like i tell people when you're younger you have the energy to do that kind of shit i did that the other day matter of fact (laughs) i took a nice hour and a half nap before my shift at Stiffy's. I came home at two in the morning-ish, and then I had to wake up at five to go to my morning job. I had very strong coffee. I worked my whole shift, because I'm a bad bitch. I'm just not irresponsible. Yeah. Yeah. You I saw five... coffee. I saw my coworker have some coffee, and I went primal, and I wanted to take it. You I growled five. at her. Yeah, I, I I needed the coffee more than she did. Like the Lord knows, I was possessed. Because no. yeah, because you have to be. Because like, but that's what we have to do when we're trying to like make our money entertain. Because if you're lucky enough. <laughs> you have a musician like me who eventually my goal is to like find very talented go-go dancers who are actually good at dancing not people who just stand on the stage and do like this yeah (laughs) yes which (laughs) it is so like that and these hips don't lie just saying it's like it's like way to point out you're the straight dancer in the room. Like it's like we all know this. And my response is 
keep on doing that because I ain't gonna give you. I ain't get. I'm not gonna give you my money. You know, it was so funny. There was a night like that at Stiffy's. I was the only person of color. The rest were whites. They were playing Megan Thee Stallion, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, reggaeton, and these hips don't lie. It's not even a competition. Let's be honest. See, yeah. See, I get that. That's why. What was it? I remember one time I was performing and somebody saw me. Like, not so much now, but like back when I was performing, I used to be able to dance hard and sing. I remember one time somebody told me, they're like, are you Spanish? I'm like, I'm like, you mistaken this for Spanish? Like, it's like, you look it's a like little I... tan to me. <laughs> a li- little tan, yeah. No, I'm very, I'm very white. Like, it's just you teach yourself, even being a musician, you teach yourself how to do like move on the beat. And. Especially with me, I make electronic music, so I'm thinking, baby, if I don't know how to dance, I chose the wrong field to write music in. (laughs) I mean, I get when rockers are like, I can't dance. I'm like, that's because you don't make music to dance to. Well, you make music for white people to dance to. Like, (laughs) you don't... And this is what, yeah, you make, and it's like, also eventually my thing was eventually like being in different communities because I will say this, like when I lived in Orlando, I was the only white person living, I was like one of two white people living in the hood. So like you learn, you learn from other cultures when you around it. And yeah. that's why what was it my dad was trying to tell me when I told him about this is actually how I told him I was moving to Detroit. This is a fucked up way to do it. But like I was having I was at Thanksgiving, have I went to somebody's house for Thanksgiving with my dad, and like I was having a conversation with somebody and we were talking about Detroit, and my dad's like, Who's planning on moving to Detroit? I'm like, I am. And like <laughs> that's what he found and he's trying to tell me he's like he's like he's like Detroit's dangerous. I'm thinking I'm like So is everybody oh. else. <laughs> so everybody else is like it's like don't get me wrong. You telling me a gay person, a thick bitch with a fat ass, <laughs> being in being in a neighborhood of black people that I'm gonna be in trouble, baby. I'm gonna do fine. I didn't tell him this, but I'm like, I'm I'm gonna do fine. Like, because as I always tell people, it's like, as I point out, interracial dating is the way of the future. If you're not with it, get with it. I well, I get. I get people who are minorities dating within their community. I understand it's like a historical thing that they can only understand. My response is to white people dating white people. You don't need to be dating white people. We don't need your mayonnaise ass like constantly over there doing stuff. No. You know, I had this friend's boyfriend be like, oh, uh, so you dating a Puerto Rican guy, so you only date within your race? Like, you're not one to speak if you're both whites. <laughs> I mean, and it's also, it's like, first of all, when people say that, it's like, with that, when people say, first of all, that's how you got people to be mixed. Like, that's how people have different ethnicities. It's like, 
if everyone just dated what they were, then that would be... I wouldn't be here. Exactly. Yeah. And Puerto Ricans as a whole, like, we are a mix. We are a mix of European ancestry, African ancestry, and indigenous ancestry. And me, I'm like a mix of all three because my facial features are more Taino, which is the name I chose for myself. Yeah. It's the indigenous people of Puerto Rico. I have more indigenous features. My skin color is like more indigenous. The fact that I'm lighter skin comes from my European ancestry. The fact that I have curly hair comes from my African ancestry. Yes, and... And I have long hair to like embrace my indigenous and my African ancestry. See, that is... Again, it's beautiful and in that it's like embrace yourself and it's also this is my view on everything when people say like especially like mask guys versus femme guys it's like i don't know i'm this is just me being over viewing this it's like if you're hot you're hot like i've never met somebody where i'm like that's too femme that's too mask because At the end of the day, even the most femme, he, they, whatever out there, they have a little bit of a masculine side. Yeah. They don't always have to show it. And in that, if people don't, always show it. I would, I would, I would say maybe I'm just a horny bitch, which is probably true. Like, <laughs> I, so okay, where am I? So yes. So what's your relationship to drugs and alcohol? Um, I am. I tend to treat my body as a temple. I don't do any drugs at all. I don't smoke at all. Um, I don't even, I have never even tried poppers. <laughs> Drinking is something I do very occasionally. I mean, I'm kind of the same. I've never, well, my thing with doing poppers is like, especially since I know what they are, that's probably what made me be like, I don't I don't need to do them. Let's guys always want to be like they're like, do you have poppers? I'm like, no. And they're like, do you want to do them? I'm like, I'm like, no. For the kids out there, I'll always say this. Poppers are VHS cleaner. That's literally what poppers are. Like, <laughs> and if a lot of gays do them to get high to like disassociate from having sex and my response to that is i'm like first of all i don't get why anyone would do something where if you do it the wrong way it gives you a giant headache mm. i just i just when somebody told me that they're like yeah if you do it the wrong way you can end up with a giant headache i'm like well yeah, i'm, I'm kind of good then like I don't really need to partake I, in this. I, yeah. I I have them, but only because a guy left them with me. Like I have no well it's also it's like when guys are doing it also again because it's chemicals, wherever you're having sex smells like chemicals when they're done. Cause and then you have to spray Febreze, which is essentially fresh smelling chemicals to get the smell out of wherever it no. Uh, 
That's why when things are too much work, I'm out. The minute that's like guys with those fetishes with like pee fetishes and all that stuff. I'm like, I'm like, you do you. It's like, if I have to put down a tarp before I have sex, this is already too much work. Like, like, especially when you have to get ready for the top, all this, like, I'm versed with, like, if you have to get ready for this, do that. Like, it's like, you already have to get ready to be sex. As a gay people, sex is already long enough to, like, prepare and get ready for. Why would you add another step? <laughs> I don't know. That's just my view on it. So, in terms of me as a said before never really done drugs my thing is it's not that like i'm opposed to it i just want to do with people i trust and have them buy whatever we're doing because yeah i've done weed um i've smoked joints it's not really for me i don't like smoking i've done edibles edibles are fine for me See if if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do something, it's going to be edibles because, as I like to point out to somebody, as a musician, as a singer, inhaling smoke is not the best thing for you. Yeah, and also I like to free dive. Yep. Yeah. Actually, oh, you like to. Free... Yeah. God. My uh, Instagram page was going to be like uh, Merman content, but I decided to use it for Gogo Dancing content. Well, I mean, in some ways, well, I mean, you could have you could have two Instagram accounts. It's a little bit. Yeah. It's, I will admit, for some people who are like. I only have a backup in I only have a backup Instagram because at one point Instagram was threatening to delete my account. So I'm like, let me just create a backup one just in case. I think it was like they flagged me for inappropriate comments because all I was doing was somebody agreed to do an interview and I just told them to like great, go check your DMs. I've already tried like messaging you. And then they flagged me. So I'm like I'm like, okay, whatever. So, where are my drugs? Alcohol, yeah. So, I don't drink when I perform. Now, I don't drink that often now, like, at all. I definitely don't drink when I perform, because I had a night. was in my early, um, like, early to mid-20s. Where I was getting handed drink after drink after drink after drink. People just like buying me stuff. And I always say when you're younger, you don't know how to tell tell people like I'm good. Like stop. And then like I think I had five drinks and I had a shot. And the mm. shots would did me in. The shots would did me in because I I felt fine. So I basically I got in my car and I had to drive an hour home. And then about 45 minutes into the drive, I got pulled over by a cop. And luckily, my dad saved my ass. Otherwise, I would have gotten a DUI. So, like, that kind of was my wake-up call. Mm. It's like, it was one of those, as I said, don't really have a problem. It's just, do I need this? And... This is what I have to say to patrons. Whenever you're going to buy, I'm not just saying this because of the story. I'm saying this because it's true. It's like, if you're going to buy entertainers drinks and you think it's better for them, they'd rather have the money anyway. Yeah. It's like, it's I'd rather like have that. the money to buy my own drinks yeah. instead of you buying them for me. Especially, it's like, Especially, I'm going to go to Los Angeles, which is a crazy example. In L.A., when you're going to a bar, 
and drinks are twelve dollars a drink. Baby, it's like you you know you're not gonna tip that dancer that much anyway. It's like just give them that. And it's like people who say don't have cash at the bar. It's like most people will give you their cash out. Most people will give you their Venmo. It's or, so funny. This one time I was dancing and this guy it's like, oh, I don't have cash. Do you take cash up? It well, was I'm, funny. I've never had that happen. See, my thing is I I always like so when this is done, this get will get posted to YouTube. I always post my Venmo and be like, if you'd like to tip me, there you go. My Venmo is always posted. I will gladly take money. It's like especially with some people. I mean, granted you pointed out you have a day job. I have a day job. There's some people that's their livelihood. Not probably so much in Orlando, but I remember hearing from a go-go booker I know, uh, like a stripper booker I know in Fort Lauderdale. He's like talking about how he he had people working for him who like the money that they made at the bar was usually to like cover their like hotel bill because they were mm. homeless. And like, that's why it's like, yes, drinks are good. You might be helping a dancer have a place to sleep that night. That like extra five, ten bucks you were going to spend on a drink, that might be able to get them a place to sleep at the end of the night or for the next week. So it's like in that, give people money. Like, I can't. I can't emphasize no, emphasize that enough. Just give people money. So okay. So what are your thoughts on how the LGBT community is being treated today? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't really watch news. Like I probably should be watching them. I watch TikToks about it. Um, I've seen bills passed that are very unfair. Like, right. like drag queens that read to children, not allowed to be doing that. Children aren't allowed to go to drag shows. They shouldn't be going there anyway. Like, exactly. like depending on the drag show and depending on the content, like there's not going to be children at bars looking at drag queens anyway yeah it's almost it's just like targeting when people say well what are kids are there first of all here's my simple rule if you're having entertainers at brunch arguably okay Fine, fine. You have to act more appropriately for children. I understand that. It's during the day. Once it hits 7 p.m. and after... Go to sleep, children. Yeah, go to sleep, children. No. It's like... If I'm going to be in here like doing monologues while I'm performing... Um, singing and screaming into a microphone. It's like no, no. It's 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 my gig. Now, if if corporations, if people want to book me for corporate gigs, if you hand me the right amount of money, I will shut up. <laughs> like. 
<laughs> it's got to be a good amount of money. But you want me to shut up and be a monkey, be a court jester? I don't love it. But I would do it. I know how to do it. I was I was raised as, an, as a choir kid. I know I know how to like not run my mouth. To me, it's not as fun, but I do it. So okay, so where would I go with this? I agree with you. There's not a whole lot going on here. I agree. A lot of the problem is with what we're what we're seeing oh because but don't even, say gay bill yeah it's not even i'm talking about outside of the united states hmm. you don't have to like watch the news all the time to know this next part that i'm gonna say which is gay people in the middle east get killed all the time yeah that's that's i feel like if we're gonna have a focus because I hate when people say, like, because people are so stupid and can't focus on two things at once. I'm like, so if you're going to have a focus, I feel like that's what we should be focusing on. Not saying that you can't have people over here in the United States fighting for people. But it's like, when you have gay and trans people dying for just being them, we... we we as people need to rescue them as a human rights issue. We should be like trying to bring them into America if we can. And that's where essentially tax dollars should be going. Not funding a war that's fought between Israel and Palestine that's been going on for thousands of years. Like, it's not going to change. And like, yes. When you have people over there, it's tragic. But I also, to counteract that point, it's like, when you have people starving out in the street, when you have people who can't afford health care, when you have people who are getting thrown out of their houses because of inflation, like, those, like, should take priority over... A foreign country. That's that's just my view on it. All right. Yeah. And, yes. And to my final question, what's the biggest misconception about you? That I'm just mean. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people think I just have a mean mug. That's a that's actually a very common answer. Mean and bitchy are probably like very common answers. My view with that is as I always tell people, I'm like, I'm not a bitch until you give me a reason to be a bitch. Period. It's, it's like it's like, yes, this actually goes to mine. Mine are that I've been told I'm intimidating and shady. Intimidating <laughs> I'd like to point out, I understand that I'm not short. I'm six foot three. I understand. I'm six that. foot two. Yes. Yes. I'm like one of it's the like, taller go go dancers at Stiffy's, actually. That probably, at least the people I know there, I could imagine that because, like, if we talk about like justifies five nine, um, cloud I think is like five seven, yeah, and like, um, who else do I know there? Angelino I know there I think is like five foot, nah, five foot, yeah, like not even like, <laughs> yeah, five foot eighty pounds probably, yeah, basically my it's... height and weight when I was like eight maybe. <laughs> Respectfully, I love Angelino. I just want that to be known. Yes, I mean, listen, I I've had him on here too. I love him, love you, baby. But it's like, God, I was trying to think. 
80 pounds. I think I was like, well, I'm probably I've exaggerating, been... but you might not looks be. Like you, it. I, I, I could have seen that you could, you probably could have been because, like, this is the thing I've been a like, not only am I a tall, bitch, but I've always been a bigger bitch. So, like, even like. When I tell people like the lightest, this is my thing. Now that now that I told you my height, I can tell you the crazy like irrational weight I used to have in my head. So as I said, six foot three for years, I thought at six foot three I could weigh one hundred and fifty pounds. Exactly. Like <laughs> I'm like you can weigh one hundred and fifty pounds. I'm like that would mean you're anorexic. Like. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, there's like no way. I think that's like the weight of somebody who's five eight. Like, yeah, but it's because you're always taught that like. Granted, I saw somebody like do this. Um, you know, sometimes it feels like as soon as I make a uh, push, argument, which was, I saw somebody say like, when obese people embrace themselves, it's seen as liberating, but when fit people <clears throat> embrace themselves, it's seen as narcissistic. I'm like, or prideful, I'm, or yeah, yeah. My response to that is, is like, you're talking to the wrong people. It's like. I mean, granted, yes, this is what I tell people. When you are fit and people don't embrace you in the way that they um, embrace bigger people, it's because they're not threatened by bigger people. People are threatened by attractive people. A lot of people won't admit it. They're threatened by them. Because they feel that like. It's somehow. Unattainable. And in that it's like. Embrace yourself as you are. Embrace them as they are. That you shouldn't like. There is. There is too much hate going on. It's like. Yeah. It's like especially with the go-go dancers. It's like. It's like, yeah, they'll compare us. us. Uh, well, I'm sorry, you always float somebody's boat, you won't float everybody's boat. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you'll eventually. It's like, believe me, don't hate on them because they're attractive, they'll give you, they'll give you other reasons to hate on them. One that I'd like to point out it's like, why every stripper slash go-go dancer in LA thinks that they can make rap music now. That's a reason to hate on people. Like, because I saw that it's like one after one. It's like, why are you all doing music? It's like, it's like, it's like with that, you know, you're not talented. You know, well, they don't. And, and if you I don't, don't know, know they're not talented. And, and, and if and if you don't know that you're not talented, I'm here to tell you most of most of y'all can't fucking do it. You're not talented. There, I fucking said it. Like because I see that and I'm like. Also, if you four years in the rap game and the only songs you can write about are twerking and getting fucked. Or distracts. It's like no. No, go out and live life. You could not be 30-something years old, and this is the only thing you have to talk about for four years. And it's a lot of it. People aren't putting out albums. This is, this is another thing. I'm getting into this. It's like, here's the thing that I say to all artists. Make tracks that are longer than two and a half minutes. Make albums, not EPs. Let people see the real you. That's all anyone wants from artists is they want them to be real. They want them to be raw. 
they want you to make upbeat music and sometimes downbeat music. They want you to be able to have a mix. That's all people want. You don't... It's it's not that hard. And if it is that hard for you, again, as I said before, maybe you shouldn't be on the mic. Let somebody else who can do it. So, okay, where was I? Intimidating. Oh, and the other one is shady, which... I haven't helped that in the last two minutes, but it's like, my response is, don't you know that most drag queens are shady? Like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't invent this shit, like, being shady. It's like, Bianca Del Rio had a career 20 years before I started doing, or like 15 years before I started doing drag. I wasn't the first one. I'm just the one that I guess speaks the loudest. And again, if you have thin skin, this ain't the industry for you. And if you're not talented, this ain't the industry for you. Somebody needs their dick sucked in the bathroom. Go, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) I swear that's what some go go dancers be doing or showing their holes. (laughs) Of course, they're trying to make more money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and again, nothing wrong with that. Because somebody's always going to want extra services. And in those extra services, give it to them. Give it to them. I want to be a star. I'm like, you are a star back there, fool. Like, get back to your glory hole. <laughs> you are the star. <laughs> you are the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Fuck, so I. A lot of times, things just come into my head, and I don't think before I speak. That's why people. That's why some people like me. That's why others probably hate me. <laughs> Because it's also, I will say this to end this before we close out. It's like, don't go back on what you say. Like, if you said something, be like, and what? I said it. I said it. Did I stutter? So many people are like, I'm afraid of offending people. It's like, we're in 2024. You're gonna make some missteps, but overall, you know, you you know what's you you know what's gonna offend people. It's like, it's like you know the basics. You know, not to call a trans person the T word. And if you don't know that, I'm here telling you, don't do it. You know, not to call black people the N word. Again, if you don't know that, I'm here to say it. You know not to call Hispanic people the S word. If you don't. These these are things that I've said. If you are under the age of... I'm being generous with this. If you're under the age of 40 and any of those words come out of your mouth in the year 2024... You, you're exposed to the internet. You know. It's like, you know. And if you don't know. I don't even know what to say to people. That I don't know. Like, you should have known. <laughs> you should. You shouldn't. With the, in the age of the internet, there's. There's nothing. Like, when Florida banned books, it's like, you can ban all the books you want, the internet's still here. Yeah. And if you start banning the internet, because that'll be the next thing. First of all, you're never going to be able... Guess what happens when you ban the internet? People become stupider. And people already view America as a dumb country, 
we shouldn't give him more reasons to. Yes. And now I got to end on a positive note. Anyway, with that being said, it was a pleasure getting to meet you. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yes. And this is Gay Out the City. I'm your host, Prince Electro Diamond, and I hope you've enjoyed. <laughs>